Hello, and welcome back to episode 3 of Let's Play The Longest Journey. I'm your host, Pyrosim, and when we last left off, we did not have a duck. And there is a duck outside this window. Let's see if we can make this work out. There's a clothesline here. Make it fall down. It's a seagull. Poor guy looks quite hungry. What do seagulls like to eat? They like to eat bread. Piece of bread. Not on the seagull. Not on the duck. line from earlier. I don't even have my ring, so let me give this note to Fiona. Good morning. Did you ever question your own sanity, April? I mean, did you ever wonder if you were going mad? Definitely. Then explain to me. How do you deal with it? Do you lock it away inside yourself? Or do you talk to someone about it? Because I'm at a loss here, April. I don't know what to do. I'd talk to someone about it. That's what I figured. It's not something you can just stow away and forget about. What I saw... I won't ever be able to forget that. Real or not. What did you see? Last night, right here in this room, Mickey and I, we were watching a movie, a documentary about the new synthetic rainforests in Mexico. You know, the ones that produce eight times the oxygen of the original organic forests. I've heard about, but I'm digressing. Anyway, about halfway through the movie, like I said, I'm probably going completely bonkers. This room became a, a... It was more like a vision, really, and I'm sure it wasn't holographic. What kind of vision? This room turned into a forest. What? It was like the forest came out of the screen and into the room. Like being in the middle of a hollow theater, but with added resolution. Hallucinogenic effects and... and smells. It only lasted for a few seconds, and then it all just disappeared. Did anyone else see this? Mickey did, but she refuses to speak of it says it was just our imagination acting up, which leaves me wondering how long it'll take before I end up in a mental institution. Something equally weird happened at the cafe last night. What was that? Last night, at the cafe, right in front of everybody, this creature appeared out of thin air. Just like your forest. It was only there for a few seconds and then it disappeared, but everybody saw it. Everybody. Oh, my. What's going on, love? I don't scare easily, but this is really getting to me. Don't know. But whatever it is, I think... I'm pretty sure. Cortez is involved. Cortez? How is he involved? I don't know that either. I'd love to find out, though. What other weird things have happened lately? Little things, like movement in the corner of your eye that's gone when you turn your head. And noises. 
The kind you're not supposed to hear in the city. Animal noises. Wild animals. And once, this was very early in the morning, mind, a few days ago, I looked down into the canal and saw what looked like an underwater city. But as I looked at it, it dissolved into ripples of water. Scary. You're telling me, darling. I'm scared of cockroaches, for God's sake. What do you think this does to my nerves? Have you seen Cortez today? No, darling. I don't think he's around. Do you have any idea where Cortez is? Sorry, he could be anywhere. Well, he does enjoy going uptown to watch old movies in some revival cinema, but where that is, I wouldn't know. Who'd know? Perhaps Zack. He is, after all, the self-appointed film expert around here. You should talk to him, darling. Great. Zack. My very best friend in the whole wide world. Could you tell Cortez I'm looking for him? Certainly, darling. If I happen to see him. Thanks. Dang, dang, dang. I have to get going. Take care of yourself out there, darling. This is gonna suck. But also, give me my ring. Because I need it. Give me my ring. My ring, my ring. I need the ring. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. Maybe I hadn't looked at it in this save, and that's why it won't work. I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry, I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. You know what's strange? I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. God. I'm glad that life is behind me. I hope I never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. This game has a lot of kind of weirdly personal touches like that that really work well. Hmm. I wonder. Annual summer blowout huh. at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, I August fourth, eight p.m. Free food, live to make performances by Roy Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go Getters. Not Tickets get available at the bar, ten dollars only. Spread the word. Now that I have my gold ring, I can go do this puzzle with the mystery machine over here. In the failed recordings, I figured out how to start this thing up. And I hope it doesn't melt or anything. Put these cables together. It's alive! Ring. So now, what I want to do is get all of these beams to be horizontal. This one changes which ones are active, and this one rotates all of the active beams by 45 degrees clockwise.
straight in the water. Looks like there's a brain inside that water jar. Which will allow us to steal this clamp. Also, I'm taking my I'm ring not back. leaving my gold ring. Somebody's going to have to replace that cable eventually. What a mystifying contraption, and completely absurd. Hmm. Yeah. Oh yes, one more thing to do before we go groveling to Zack. Piece of shit. I know that duck. Bon voyage, ducky! Ducky! I love you, duck. You are my best friend, duck. Such a cute little duck. Tragically short. It's a rubber ducky. It looks disturbingly familiar. But how the heck did it get all the way over here? However, it may have happened. Be useful to me. Steal these. This band aid off of it. Find the band-aid with the work glove. Now there's no more hole. Rubber glove. Patched up and good as new. Alright. Now that that's done, let's go talk to Zack. I will lean on the escape key a little more so we don't have to waste time walking across all these bridges. I never imagined I'd be doing this in a million years. Well, well, what do you know? The princess comes knocking after all. Don't get your hopes up. I think you're the one who's got her hopes up, babe. And you better hope I don't slam this door in your face. Just do me one favor first, okay? Well, give me a reason to, babe. A reason? You want a reason? Okay. What about a date? Yeah. Good. Tonight. Uh, sure. Tonight. I'll meet you at the... Pavilion, was it? And, uh, are you gonna put out? What? I mean, if I'm gonna use my VIP passes and my pills, babe, I just gotta know if it'll be worth it or not. You on? We'll see, Zack. Eh, uh, just don't do a Houdini and vanish on me, babe. If you're a no-show and I wait around for you all night, I end up looking like an asshole. And that wouldn't make me very happy. I'll wouldn't be a want good for girl you to look and like show. an asshole, now would we? Smart. So, uh, what do you wanna know? You know where I can find Cortez? Cortez, yeah? I knew there was something going on between you guys. Don't be ridiculous, Zack. It's not what you think. Whatever. Hey, like I give a shit? You're with me tonight, and by tomorrow morning, I don't think you'll find that old creep so appealing anymore. So, where's Cortez? Uh, when he's not outside reading or whatever the hell he does, he's usually at the Mercury Theater. They show old movies on real celluloid stock through a projector, like in the fucking Middle Ages. Where is this theater located? I don't remember the street it's on. It's been ages since I was there last. But you'll find it if you head out the East Gateway from Metro Circle. It's close to the Radio Power Building, and there are tons of adult stores in the area. Actually, if you're not too busy, you could pick up something for us to watch tonight. Something really filthy. Zack, I don't think... Hey, whatever. I was just kidding, yeah? Babe, you got a major bug up your ass. Get a fucking sense of humor, yeah? I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for the tip and the info. Just be at the pavilion by ten, okay? I don't like waiting around for babies like you. Got a million better things to do. And it wouldn't be a good idea for you to ditch me. 
not a good idea at all. That's the reason that I hate that character so much. I mean, he is actually harmless, but definitely an asshole. Nothing comes of any of it. Okay, now that we know that we're going to the Mercury Theater, we can get on the tram. Let's head over to the subway station. Already have a pass purchase, so I can walk through the scanner gates. Let's do this over here. There's a high voltage cable running parallel with the rail, and something's gotten stuck between them. It looks like a large iron key. Take it. It's an adventure game, you take things. I'd have to get down there to reach it with my hands, but with that frayed high voltage cable. I didn't brush my teeth this morning just so I could be fried bacon with a pretty smile. I'll have to find some other way to get the key. Let's go fishing for it. With a clamp. And... Use this rubber duck. And we'll hold the clamp open. When I was a wee lass, I tried fishing a couple of times in the pond behind my house. But I never caught anything. I hope my luck's improved. Pretty cool catch. We use the duck to keep the clamp open until it's around the key. Then the duck deflates. And then we get the key. And clearly we brought the duck back with us. It's not in our inventory anymore. I guess that's just because we don't need it anymore. Bon voyage, ducky. This is the first thing I saw when I came to Newport. Big city? Gotta love it. Sextasy. Sextasy. Sexual fantasy. Just the thing I need to feel really depressed about my love life. Metro Circle. Gloriously decadent. I hear Bingo's planning to buy the whole thing. Convert it into a theme park or something. I'll believe it when I see it. Sextasy is a pretty good name. This elevator. Hold it! You're not taking this elevator. Why? Because you're not carrying proper identification. Didn't you know that's a corporate offense in Newport? In Venice, you don't have to. I see. Venice. I should have known. Step back or I'll be forced to take you down with extreme prejudice. How do I get permission to go through? Only citizens of mid-level status or above are allowed to use these elevators. I guess you're new to this city or you'd know that. Uh, yeah, fresh from the countryside. You do look like a farm girl, it's true. Hey, watch it! Thanks, officer. We're here to protect, serve, and to inform you of the fantastic range of products offered by Bokemba Mercer and Bingo, manufacturers of the world's favorite soft drinks and handguns. Well, those are things that go together. Well, we won't have to worry about those elevators for quite a while yet, viewers, so let's just go ahead and go the other direction. This guy's the reason they invented the phrase, hitting the bottle. And he's hitting it hard. Well... 
I think he's selling something. Counterfeit. Triple strength raptures, probably. Highly addictive and guaranteed to blow your mind. Literally. Popular place. Not my crowd, though. Excuse me. Yes, huh? Oh, geez. Hold on there one second, lady. Dang, Marquis! Light up! Good. Now stay that way, you hear? Is the theater open now? No. I reckon it ain't, lady. It don't open till this evening. Ain't nobody in there either. I reckon that wouldn't be legal. Do you know a man called Cortez? No. I can't say as I does, lady. Ain't never met him. Now, I reckon I'd like to get on with my sweeping, uh huh? But I'm supposed to meet him here. Are you sure you don't know him? Look, lady, I reckon you you should just mind your own bee's knees and get. I told you, I ain't seen Cortez today. You said you didn't know Cortez. I, I reckon I don't know nobody by that name, so, so I tell you what. I'd mighty appreciate it if, if you'd stop bothering me. And let me get on with my work. Jesus, Mary, and baby Joseph. I reckon the whole dang world is f wants to find Cortez today. Thanks, anyway. Yes, yeah, um, I'll tell you what. You go on now. And let Freddie Mellon do his sweeping before his mama, Mrs. Dottie Mellon, get all P.I.S.T. off. Conspicuous guy here. Box, Box office, office is closed. Is closed. It's locked. We can't just go in the front door. I do think Cortez is inside this theater. But how are we gonna get inside? Well, that you'll find out next time. I'll leave you off with this. Casablanca. That's with John Wayne and Catherine Hepburn, I think. They play a married couple who adopt a baby leopard during World War II. It's a timeless classic. <laughs> I think that's about how Casablanca goes. See you next time, viewers.